In this video, we will talk about a little bit how we program the web using Spring. First, a few words about what is Spring. Spring is a major Java development framework that contains a lot of things. It supports dependency injection and inversion of control. And originally, that was the very first thing that was available in Spring. But later on, Spring developed further. And now it contains aspect oriented programming, data access and integration support, and the Web MVC model view controller programming. So if we look at the Spring framework, runtime structure, which is a diagram from the Spring official web page, then what we are really talking about in this tutorial briefly is the web framework, which is on the upper right corner. So what is Spring? Spring is a web programming and an implementation of the MVC pattern. M stands for model, which is the data that has to be displayed or sent to the browser. V stands for view, which talks about how the data should be formatted for the visualization. And C stands for controller, which essentially controls the flow of the program, selects which model and which view to use to compose the data that we have to display for the client. Just to lighten it up a little bit, a very simple example could be a shopping basket. Usually shopping basket is the example that tutorials select because it's very simple in this case model is the data object that stores all items that are in the basket including all the data about the individual products the view it can be many things but in our example it will be a time leaf template which contains placeholders for the data and controller is the code that invokes business logic to create the model data and composes it with the view. When we program, we spend most of our times creating the controller in Spring. Controller classes are annotated with the annotation controller. Models are usually objects, instances of classes that implement the org Spring framework UI model interface, and views are usually templates. So controller classes are annotated with the annotation controller. The methods inside the controller class, which actually have the actual logic for the controlling, they are annotated with the get mapping that defines what URL should the controller be responsible to handle. And method arguments are parsed request parameter. So as we will see in the example, the greeting method is annotated with the get mapping and the argument of get mapping is a string that says slash response. So anything inside this spring application that has the URL of the host port and so on slash response will be handled by this controller. And if there are parameters in the request, like the request parameter name, which is optional, required false, the default value is word, then it will be automatically put by the framework into the variable name. And the argument model is the type of the model, so something that implements the model interface of Spring. Therefore, the framework will know that this is going to be the model, so there is a model object in that. And the Spring default model object has a very simple method and attribute, which can assign a value to string. And this string we can reference in the template. So whenever there is a special placeholder in the template with the name, there the actual name, which was coming in as a request parameter will be displayed. And then what we return is the name of the template, the name of the view itself, response, and then the framework will essentially put the view and the model data together to create the HTML response and send it to the browser. Let's see how it works. So here is our application. You can see the structure on the left side, which is just a standard Maven project. It has two classes, application and response controller. The application is very simple. We are using Spring Boot. And we annotate this as a Spring Boot application. 
and we have a public static void main in it, so it can be executed directly. And all we do is that we invoke the static method run in Spring application and discovers all the environment, all the programs. It will find that we have a controller and it will realize that we are actually running and developing a web application. So it will start up Tomcat automatically for us. We have an index.html, which opens if I don't specify any path in the URL. And in this index, I open it. You can see that it's nothing else than just get your greeting at and a reference to the slash response URL. You may recall from the slides, but we also look at this, that this slash response is used in the mapping for the response controller for the method greeting. So whenever we have the URL localhost column 8080 slash response, then the Spring framework, which is started up by Spring Boot, will automatically invoke the greeting method. And if we have a CGI parameter name, then we will get the value of this string that we provide as a parameter into the variable name. Well, actually, this is the controller that you have seen previously on the slides, but now we will see it running. And we still have a response.html. It's a time leaf template, and uh, there are many template languages, and you can use template, free marker, many other templates, or even JSP files. But by default, Spring Boot configures time leaf template. If you want something else, then you have to configure a little bit Spring Boot. But as a default, it uses time leaf, and the placeholder you can see here. That's for the placeholder for the name. And this is going to be replaced with the value that we pass into the model and assign to the string name. And then into this parameter, and then into this paragraph, the time leaf templating engine will put hello name and an exclamation mark when we run the controller. So the next thing is to start the application, which is very simple. I just click run application. It starts up in three seconds. We have a little warning over there. That's because uh, I'm using a spring version, which is not really up to date for Java 11. And there are some reflective access in it, but it doesn't hurt us at this moment. And the application was started approximately three and a half seconds. And now we can go to Firefox and open the web page that is available through the Tomcat server. So here is the web page and it was already opened. So I just open it again. Yeah, it's very fast because it's on localhost. And you see that here is the link that we have seen previously on the HTML. I click here and it says, hello world. Well, if you remember, let's switch back to the controller for a short moment. We have here the default value word. So name is not specified. So it says the name is word. But let's try and let's specify some name as a CGI parameter. I just type it here. Question mark as usually. Name equals, oh yeah, I was already writing it here once when I was trying. So I just go down and say that the name is pack reader. And it says hello reader because now name is specified in the command line so we get that as a parameter essentially this is the very simple application using mvc and it's very simple to start up a web application using spring and spring boot